So a few weeks ago, I made a video about a 3D printed case that I had designed. And uh, if you haven't seen that video, that one goes into a little more detail about how I designed it and all the different changes I had to make to make sure that everything fit together once everything was printed. But this was the original case that I had made and it was designed to be a small form factor case, you know, have very little wasted space and use the, the sandwich design for the motherboard and the and the GPU here. And that is the best way to get the smallest computer that still supports a dual slot GPU. But that does add a lot of cost to, to your case design. So even though this only cost maybe $15, $20 to print, you still had to, to fork over some additional money to, to get the PCIe extender cable, as well as a pass-through cable for the power and standoffs for the GPU. There was a number of little things that you had to, to get. So it ended up being like a $40, $50 case in the end, which is, it's not too expensive, but at $50, you're getting pretty close to getting like a standard just case, if you not necessarily this small, but just a standard case. So I wanted to see what I could do to make the, the cheapest case pretty much possible while still being small form factor. So using what I learned from this case right here, this was the basic outline, what I found out for the, the new case design. I wanted everything in the same place. I wanted to use the motherboard's native PCIe port for, for the GPU, so no need to get an extension cable, as well as have the SFX power supply right here on top of the motherboard. Using very much the same kind of design principles from the other one, having printed parts for the motherboard. This is actually just a cross section from the other case right there and I added in the, the GPU parts here and the, the power supply part here. And I wanted it to be up to 300 millimeters tall. That way we could get even bigger GPUs in there if you wanted to. They used the same kind of technique to secure the top case to the interior parts of the case. This was the starting block and it looks pretty similar to what I ended up with. The first thing I had to change was the power supply since uh, power supplies are not ovals. So I needed to actually make this a square in order to be able to get access the, the power switch and the, the connector for the main power supply. The second thing I needed to do was expand the GPU connections here. When I tried to plug in HDMI on the first try, uh, it was hitting the plastic. There was no space to actually plug in the monitor. So I needed to, to make this section here uh, a little bit wider in order to support all that. And then the third thing I had to do was add in some ventilation holes right here so that the air would pass through from the front and pass through the GP, the, the CPU in order to exit the back. This probably doesn't add too much uh, of, of cooling, but I wanted to have the air some way to ex escape at the back. Other than that, I added a bar that goes all the way up here to have a little bit more rigidity to this top piece when you're printing, make it a little bit more stable, and made these connectors here a little bit thinner um, so that when everything is printed out, the case part actually just rests right beside here. So it does double function um, to what it was in the original case design here. The exterior had a few more changes. There was a lot of wiggling <laughs> that happened in these very, very thin parts here at the top. And so the further up I went, the especially before the, the connections happened that fused the two different uh, beams together, I would get a lot uh, of wobble in the prints and it, it kind of looked pretty ugly. Uh, and so as I kept going up, I kept slowing down the speed up until the point uh, near the top. I'm printing at like 10 millimeters a second just to get everything uh, really, really stable. And yeah, that was not uh, a very fun first print is looking at all the quality coming out of it. But so what I ended up doing though is revise the design a little bit. So the front of the case actually is exactly the same. I didn't make any changes there. But for the sides and the tops, I actually made the vents a little bit further back. That way when it's printing, these bars are a little bit shorter and they'll be a little bit more stable, as well as there is a space here in the front to, to mount a 120 millimeter fan. And uh, if by moving up the, the vents here, it gives a little bit more time for the air to go straight as opposed to just flying out the sides. So that was uh, the second thing that I changed here. And then the third thing was I added in support beams all the way around 
in order to give it a little bit more rigidity as it prints up higher and higher. So uh, on all three sides, giving it a little bit more support. And the top just has the same screw holes that were in the old case design. One thing I really wanted to do with this case was to still support printing on smaller printers, printers that can't go up to 300 millimeters. And the way this case was designed made it very, very easy to just make a chopped version that would support only roughly ITX style GPUs, but would still be able to print in, case, like in printers that would only go up to 220 millimeters instead of the 300 needed for, for the extended long case. Um, the changes between all of them, pretty much the only difference is how short they are. <laughs> they, they do have the same vents on the top, although they have been shrunk down even more. So this small case would be even easier to print, but the insides are identical. So technically, if you wanted to, you could print the, the small insides and then put the big case on the front. It would just have a little bit of a gap since the connections that hold the interior to the exterior are in the exact same location on both sets. But other than screws in order to mount the motherboard, there is absolutely no other parts needed in order to get your case printed and working. You don't need to get you know extension cables, uh, you don't need to get you know standoffs, you don't need to do pretty much anything um, other than buy a power button and you need to probably get some case screws to massive mount the motherboard, mount the, the power supply, and maybe hold the top part of the, the exterior part of the case to the interior part of the case. But with screws being pennies and you can get either of these cases printed pretty easily with one kilo of PLA or ABS or PETG, whatever you want to use, um, then you could get the whole thing done for less than $25. It's not an expensive case. And this is probably the cheapest way to get a case made for any computer. The big one tops out at 11.3 liters, the small one's at 8.3 liters. So they're both still firmly within the small form factor case uh, design. And if you don't plan on going to a bigger GPU, this small one here should be ideal. Uh, it has space for the single fan up front, but has so much in terms of venting that you shouldn't need too much more. The extended case, does still have only the, the single fan up front, but has a lot more space in case you want to do radiators or something like that there too. It's probably the cheapest thing that you can house your computer in other than maybe a pizza box. And it should look pretty good in, in any environment, especially since you can get pretty creative with what materials you print with. I used PLA, but if you are worried about uh, any type of, type of warping or anything like that, you can go up to something a little bit sturdier and it shouldn't be that much different in cost. Links to everything will be in the description. Thanks for watching guys. This is LOH with Low Tech and this has been a quick look at my 3D printed case. Subscribe.